Magical, mystical, romantic, and stunningly beautiful, Venice is truly one of the most unique cities in the world. With 118 small islands all connected by over 400 bridges, Venice possesses an appeal that attracts sweethearts, newlyweds, lovers, travelers of all kind, and of course, artists. Narrow alleyways, endless canals, grand architecture, colorful buildings, gorgeous sunsets, and delicious wine make Venice a great paint and sip destination. For those of you who are interested in coming to Venice to paint and sip, here are my tips for you. Choose the right time of the year to come. Like every great travel destination, Venice has its high and low seasons, and there are pros and cons to both. The high season, May through August, has great weather. However, there are a lot of tourists and prices of flights, foods, and hotels are at their highest. The low season, November through March, might see less tourists and lower prices, but it's cold, it snows, and sometimes it even floods. Yep, they call it the Aqua Alta. Crazy, I know. Um, but choosing the right time to come depends upon your budget, your tolerance for tourists, and your visual preference. I've been to Venice a few times now, and I always come in September because the peak season just ended. Prices of things, they begin to drop. The kids are all back in school, and most backpackers and tourists are gone and the days are definitely still bright and sunny and warm, which is perfect for painting outside. Stay during the week. Regardless of what time of year you visit, it's always best if you stay during the week instead of on the weekend. Although it can be busy any day of the week, Venice is even more busy on the weekend. It has one of those weekend destination feels to it, a place where people come for one to two nights, usually on Friday and Saturday, um, before heading off to somewhere else in Europe. You'll notice less people and cheaper hotel prices Monday through Thursday. Get a room with a view. Finding a hotel that has a view of a canal or some other part of Venice might be a little more expensive, but it'll be worth it for you when you want to paint but you don't want to deal with the crowds or you don't want to carry your painting supplies around. Before you book, check your hotel to see if they have rooms with views. If not, many have balconies or rooftops where you can set up your easel. Find a spot early in the morning or late in the afternoon. With nearly 30 million tourists visiting a year, Venice can get seriously crowded and making your way through the narrow streets and alleyways can be a hassle, especially when you're carrying your painting supplies. Go early in the morning, between like 6 to 9 a.m., and watch the sunrise. Avoid the crowds and you enjoy some privacy before the trains arrive, the planes land, and the boats dock. If you're not an early bird, then just go in the later part of the afternoon after the majority of tourists have left, you're going to notice that people head out around 4 or 5. This is when they start to go back either to their cruise ship or to the train station. Check the cruise schedule. Some of the best painting spots are down by the pier around St. Marco Square, but unfortunately this is where all the tourists go once they come off the cruise ships. Planes and trains arrive like clockwork every day, but cruise ships on the other hand, they don't. So I suggest that you take a look at the docking schedule that you can find on cruisetimetables.com to plan your painting session and avoid the larger cruise ship crowds. If possible, try to always carry your paint set with you. You just never know when you're going to stumble upon that perfect view you just have to paint. You turn down an alleyway and boom, there it is. You see that perfect spot. The lighting's clear, the colors are crisp, and there's no one around. It's now or never. This is bound to happen to you at least once in Venice, and if you don't have your paint set with you, the moment will likely be lost if you have to race back to your hotel to get your painting supplies. Avoid those touristy areas. Although it might be nice to paint the Rialto Bridge, the Bridge of Sighs, or St. Marco Square, don't count on it. There are way too many people. You're not gonna have any peace and quiet. People are bumping into each other, taking selfies. It's just a mess. Um, so it's best in these really touristy areas if you can take a nice photograph and paint these iconic places back at your studio. 
you should probably expect that you're going to attract an audience. You are in one of the most beloved cities in the world, a place where nearly 50,000 tourists come each day to visit, and everyone's taking photos, they're eating, drinking, and buying souvenirs, and here you are, set up with your easel on the edge of a constant flow of foot traffic. Expect people to stand behind you and watch you as you paint. They're going to take your picture and even strike up a conversation with you. Don't get discouraged, don't get frustrated, and definitely don't be rude. As long as you're mentally prepared for it, you can totally handle it. Visit the local art galleries. You want inspiration? Well, just visit an art gallery and see for yourself some of the paintings that local artists have done. Don't be afraid to talk to the artists. They may give you some great advice or even point you in the direction of an awesome scenic spot that just wasn't on the tourist map. Don't forget to get lost. They say that the best part of Venice is getting lost, and I totally agree. Just wander around aimlessly through the alleyways, because you never know what magical painting spot you may discover. Know where those paint stores are. Although you're not going to find a Michaels or a Walmart anywhere in Venice, Venice is art friendly, and there are a few art supply stores throughout the city. However, Many of these stores are little mom and pop shops, so you might want to call ahead or check out their website before heading there just to make sure they have what you need, that you actually know where they are, and that they're going to be open when you get there. Take a water taxi or a Vaporetto. One way to avoid carrying your materials through the narrow streets and the floods of the tourists is to take a water taxi or Vaporetto. You can easily check the route schedule to see which one will take you to where you want to go. It's pretty simple. You can just hop on, you enjoy your 20 to 30 minute ride down the canal, and then you hop off when it gets near your painting destination. Also, being on the water gives you a pretty cool perspective of the city, and it makes for some great photos for future paintings. With that out of the way, now comes the sipping. First things first, can you drink in public in Venice? The answer is yes, <laughs> provided you don't act like a drunken tourist. Um, so enjoying a drink down by the pier, around St. Basilica Square, or on the banks of the canals has long been enjoyed by tourists and locals. So go right ahead and pop the cork and enjoy your paint and sip experience. What should you sip on while painting in Venice? Bars, restaurants, and liquor stores throughout Venice sell wines from all parts of Italy. But if you're aiming for that true authentic paint and sip experience, then stick with the local wines. The Venetian region has an incredibly diverse landscape and a wide variety of microclimates, creating perfect conditions for growing high quality red and white wines. The Orto de Venezia is a wine produced on the island of San Erasmo, and Venissa is another wine that is produced on the island of Mazorbo. Both vineyards are literally just a few minutes away from the main island by boat. Want a local drink other than wine? Then I would recommend trying Prosecco, which is Italy's version of a French champagne. And like a champagne, you can drink Prosecco by itself or mixed with fruit juice or other alcohols, which brings me to my next drink, the Bellini. This is also a very popular drink in Venice and is made with Prosecco and either peach or nectar juice. It tastes almost exactly like a mimosa. Lastly, there's the Aperol Spritz, which is made with Prosecco and Aperol and is considered the typical Venetian pre-dinner drink with over 100,000 drink per day in Venice. No matter what you choose to sip on while painting, don't forget to bring a bottle opener and a versatile cup, and as always, be sure to sip responsibly. Oh, really? Just straight up? Whoa. Thanks for watching. Please join me as I paint and sip around the world.